Okay folks, Will here again with Happily Ever Outdoor. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at two folding skillets, one from Self-Reliance Outfitters and the other from GSI. And hopefully, we can help you decide which one is gonna be right for you. So keep watching. All right, folks, so I'm actually a pretty big fan of folding skillets. I think they're a really great option if you do a lot of camping, a lot of hiking. Maybe you want a larger scale pan um, for cooking bigger meals, but you don't want a ton of extra weight and you don't want that bulk and that awkward size of a handle getting in your way when you're trying to pack it in your kit. Now, there are currently a handful of different options on the market. These are probably two of the more well-known and popular. We have the Pathfinder folding skillet from Self-Reliance Outfitters, as well as the GSI Bugaboo folding skillet. Now in terms of price, at least here in the US currently, these are basically identical. I believe this one goes for $19.95, this one goes for $19.99, basically 20 bucks US. Now in terms of design, these two pans have some key differences as well as some similarities. Both of these pans come in at eight inches in diameter. The GSI pan is constructed of aluminum with a non-stick coating, while the Pathfinder skillet is completely made of stainless steel with no coating whatsoever. You can see the GSI pan has no lid included, while the Pathfinder skillet does have a lid. There's a fairly substantial weight difference if you're really counting ounces. The GSI skillet comes in at 12.8 ounces, whereas the Pathfinder skillet comes in at one pound, four ounces. Of course, that is including the lid. We can also see looking at the bottom of the pan that the GSI pan has kind of a grippy texture to it, whereas the Pathfinder is smooth with just the Pathfinder logo embossed there. Now moving on to the handle itself, obviously both pans have a folding handle. You can see the GSI folds inward, it flips out, locks just like that. There is no extra lock like safety mechanism, but there's really not one required. You see I had to jerk it pretty hard to actually get it to, to pop out, so it's fairly sturdy in there. You've got a rubber coating on there to kind of help keep that pan from getting too hot, or that handle rather from getting too hot on you. And then when you're done with it, you just squeeze and it drops in. And when looking at the two side by side, this one definitely has a little bit of a beefier handle. You've got a uh, heavier thickness um, to the uh, metal rod right there. Now when looking at the Pathfinder skillet, you can see with the handle folded up, it folds flat to the bottom, which is actually a pretty nice design. It fits pretty streamlined there. So it's gonna slide easily into a bag. Um, in order to deploy it, you've just gotta squeeze it a little bit and then flip that handle up. You just gotta make sure you pull it all the way up to where it locks into that top mechanism. And then you have a sliding lock right there that you're gonna to need to slide down and that's gonna kinda of squeeze on there and that's what's gonna keep the handle um, from popping out on you. So with that being said, once you have it set up properly, it is more firmly in there than the GSI pan. That's definitely not going to pop out, but you do have to keep in mind, you need to get that mechanism all the way locked in, and you need to slide the handle down or it is not gonna work the way it's intended. Now, while this handle still is pretty sturdy, obviously it's not quite as sturdy as the GSI pan. You can see it's got a little more of a flex to it and there's no kind of coating there so you're gonna have to be mindful of that 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 could get really hot especially if you're cooking on a campfire or something like that so folks in terms of function when comparing some of those design differences I personally kind of like the handle on the GSI a little bit better just because it's a little bit beefier handle I think it's a little easier to set up and deploy there's no way to really mess it up and I like the fact that it has that rubber coating when you compare it to the Pathfinder skillet, where you have to be a little more careful to make sure you get that mechanism locked in properly, and you also gotta make sure you set that lock, even though it is a little bit more um, sturdy in terms of the, the lock on there, once you get it set, I still prefer the GSI. And again, I like the fact that uh, you've got the coating on there, whereas with this one, you don't, so you're probably gonna need to wear a pair of gloves or something like that um, to make sure that you don't burn your hand. 
However, in terms of storage, I do like the fact that the handle on the Pathfinder skillet locks in nice and tight to the bottom, fits super flush, so it's gonna slide easily into your bag. Whereas the GSI one kinda is flopping around a little bit there and it could potentially get hung up on something when you're pulling it in and out or whatever, but it just doesn't really lock in. And then you've got that little bit of a bulge that kinda sticks out right there that could get hung up on stuff. Again, the Pathfinder skillet does include a lid while the GSI does not and the lid is actually really nice. It's sturdy while still being lightweight. It fits really nice the way the lip is designed. It fits perfectly into the pan right there so it's going to be easy to store. You've got a little flip up D-ring there um, that you could use to hook to lift that lid so that you don't burn yourself. But if you do a lot of cooking, especially anything a little bit you know fancier, the lid makes a huge difference depending on what you're trying to do. So that lid is actually a pretty huge difference when you compare the two, um, given that they are basically at the exact same price point. Just as a side note though, this lid will actually fit with the GSI pan, so if you have both like I do, or if you're able to get a hold of the lid by itself, just know you can see that it's actually a pretty good fit on here as well. Now in terms of function, of course, we've also got to mention the coating. Again, the GSI pan has a non-stick coating on there whereas the Pathfinder skillet is pure raw stainless steel. So obviously one big pro when it comes to the non-stick coating is that it's non-stick. So depending on what you're cooking, if you're trying to make eggs, things like that that tend to stick to the pan, it's going to be a lot easier to do with this guy than it's going to be to do with this one. Certainly working with uncoated stainless steel like this, it can be a lot more finicky you're going to want to make sure you're more careful about controlling the temperature on the pan and uh, a lot of times I've found like if you're cooking eggs or something like that it's better to go ahead and crack your eggs and let them sit in the pan for a while before you put it on the fire so that the heat or the temperature rather will kind of level out between the pan and the eggs and then put it on the fire so it can heat up more slowly and you're gonna have less of an issue with sticking which brings us to our very last point which is durability now when it comes to durability, one key factor is the cooking surface. Now while the uncoated stainless steel may be a little more finicky, a little trickier to deal with when it comes to cooking, it is going to be basically bomb proof, indestructible, it's going to last forever. Now this pan I haven't used super heavily, but you can already see it's kind of starting to take on a little bit of a, uh, a patina there and that'll kind of get thicker and heavier as it goes on and it'll start to be a little bit less sticky of a pan the more you use it the better you break it in but the good news is you don't have to worry about rust you don't have to worry about corrosion uh, you don't have to worry about anything happening to this uh, what it is now is what it's going to be 10 years from now even if it is just a little more broken in and a little more crusty now in terms of the non-stick coating while it is really functional it's great it's easy to work with because your food doesn't stick to it there are some disadvantages when it comes to long-term durability. One example is that you're not going to want to use metal utensils on nonstick to include your knife. Of course a lot of people, even myself sometimes when I'm out cooking in the woods, I don't bring a lot of utensils with me. I don't bring a cutting board all the time, things like that. And so I'll end up tending to cut up my food like if it's sausage or something like that in the pan itself. Now with the Pathfinder skillet, no problem there. But with this, even if you just do it one time, you can see one time, you probably can't see in the video, but I can see looking at it, where I've already got a few scratches in there just because I didn't have a cutting board to use and I thought, oh, it'll be okay, but I put some scratches in my pan. So you're definitely gonna wanna keep this in mind that this is a finish that if you don't take care of it, um, it's gonna end up eventually starting to chip and things like that. And as you know, with non-stick, once it starts chipping, you gotta throw it out because that finish is gonna be toxic if you ingest it. Another thing you've got to keep in mind, although I've had pretty good luck with this pan and I've used it a lot, you've got to be more careful with heat because you can scorch non-stick coatings. Now one way you could do that is like cooking over a campfire if you're not paying attention. The heat's a little tougher to regulate, so if you drastically overheat this pan, you can start to cook off that finish. Another thing you need to be mindful of is if you're using a like micro gas stove, uh, like a backpacker type stove that has a very small area that the pan actually sits on that's going to focus that heat in that one area so if you weren't moving that pan around enough you let it sit in that one spot for too long the same thing you can end up scorching out a circle in the middle of your pan 
The same principle would apply if you were using a really small wood burning stove, say like an Emberlet Fire Ant, something like that. So while I've been really impressed with this pan in terms of the coating, keep in mind that this finish will not last forever and eventually you're gonna have to replace this pan. Whereas again, with the stainless steel, that's really not gonna be an issue. Now when it comes to durability in terms of the overall construction, I really don't think you can go wrong with either pan. I mean, these are both really stout, even though they're made of different materials. They've both got sturdy enough handles. The mechanisms are, are very simple. There's really no way that I can see them really breaking down or malfunctioning over time. So whichever you choose, I think you can expect to get a lot of use out of them as long as you take care of them properly. Now, I'm not gonna throw out any kind of a verdict as far as which pan I think is best because I think they're both great. I use them both on a regular basis, sometimes for different things, different trips. But I hope this video was helpful to you so that you could kind of see some of the key differences and the similarities and figure out which one's gonna best fit your needs. Of course, if you have any questions about the Pathfinder or the GSI 8-inch folding skillet, feel free to drop those in the comments below and we'll help you out as best we can. Until next time, stay happy, stay outdoors.